All right, back at the U.S. Trade Representative's office, we're very happy to be joined now by the chief ag negotiator, Issy Siddiqui. Good to see you, sir, and thank you for being with us. Uh, let's talk about some of the uh, trade issues that are going on. Well, we talked with Ambassador Kirk about uh, uh, South Korea. That one is in place and going now. Are there any other details to work out, especially what about the beef issue? Uh, that issue is already worked out in terms of the TRQ uh, growth, which is going to be every year 6,000 metric tons, and also on the tariff reduction every year decreasing by 2.5% uh, after 15 years going to zero from 40% to zero tariffs uh, for all uh, beef. So that those details are already worked out. There are other details on the TRQs for other uh, commodities which are part of this agreement. Those are being worked out. So we have an agreement where tariffs went, as you heard Ambassador Kirk say that, on nearly 80% of all uh, products, both industrial as well as agriculture products. And we are going to be implementing those changes, either those which already got done last week or those phase out over a 15-year period. Let's look at some other issues. Uh, we've we're kind of waiting for word on country of origin labeling and that dispute. Uh, Canada and Mexico uh, have brought that up, uh, you know, as uh, uh, claiming harm being done. Can you give us any updates or when we might get word on that? Uh, last uh, November, as you know, we had a, uh, a decision by the WTO panel, which essentially did two things. One is it uh, uh, reinforced uh, U.S. right to require country of origin labeling. There was no question about that. But the, uh, the second part was how it was implemented in terms of labeling regime. They question under the, uh, the WTO TBT agreement. We have consulted with all stakeholders and uh, also members of Congress, and we're looking at all options. Uh, deadline is this week to appeal the decision, and we'll be making that decision very soon. So the decision will be whether to appeal and defend our cool uh, as it stands right now, or will if if you choose not to appeal it, then then what happens then? If uh, we uh, do not appeal, uh, then we have one year to implement. Uh, the decision, if we appeal, then we are going to go to the panel uh, for appealing the decision, and we are hoping that we, number one, it will reinforce our uh, decision to reinforce and require labeling, which assures the country of origin uh, requirement. So you're not going to tell us yet. The announcements have been made, but has the decision been made? Uh, we have actually consulted uh, with different uh, segments of the, in the, not only the industry, uh, but as well as consumer groups and Congress. So it's going to be made very soon, and I can assure you uh, we are looking at all options on the table. Okay. Uh, let's uh, turn to Taiwan, right? Ractopamine, that's, that's a stumbling block there. It's very much impacting our, our beef and pork trade. Uh, it is a, a feed ingredients, rectopamine, used both uh, by beef and pork industry in the U.S. Uh, 27 countries have approved the use of rectopamine, and, uh, and uh, we have gone to CODEX, which is the, uh, the body which uh, sets the standards for uh, both chemicals as well as uh, veterinary chemicals and drugs. And we are hoping that we'll get the CODEX uh, 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 MRL, which is called maximum residue limit. Meanwhile, we continue to work with the government of uh, Taiwan to use science and as well as international standard and commercial viability of our beef in terms of allowing the beef exports to Taiwan. Uh, we will continue to work in, in resolving this issue. I know President Ma of uh, Taiwan has been uh, trying to resolve this issue. We, had, we have been assured, and we hope we will have the resolution of that issue in the near future. So you feel like progress is being made? Uh, I think the, the, the overall, the, the signals we're getting, uh, uh, the right signals, uh, which we have insisted in terms of using science and as well as uh, commercial viability, uh, but uh, still uh, he had gone in terms of the public outreach, which has been done by the government of Taiwan and the Council of Agriculture. We're hoping that uh, they'll make the decision establishing a, what, again, the, was called the MRL, maximum residue limit for beef, for imported beef. Let's switch now to Russia and uh, possible uh, permanent normal trade relations with them. Uh, where does that stand? Uh, Mike, at long last, Russia was invited to be a member of uh, WTO last December, as you know. And so now, in terms of the protocol of accession, 
Now their parliament or Duma has to approve that agreement and we are hoping sometime this summer uh, their parliament will approve the, the commitments they made to comply with the WTO uh, accession and then after 30 days after they notify the World Trade Organization they will become members of WTO. We think for our farmers and ranchers it's a win-win um, uh, situation because we are able to negotiate some very um, hefty increase in our beef export uh, from 21,700 metric ton to 60,000 metric ton. We also were able to negotiate in some country a specific TRQ, which half of that TRQ for pork used to be for the European Union. Now this will be a global TRQ of 400,000 metric ton for pork, and this is global TRQ, and with a tariff of zero within that TRQ of 400,000 metric ton. Again, our beef, uh, beef industry as well as pork industry will benefit from these um, negotiations we are able to achieve on behalf of our farmers and ranchers. Poultry also looks very good in terms of maintaining a current level of market access into Russia. We are talking with our chief ag negotiator for the U.S. Uh, office of the U.S. Trade Representative, Issy Siddiqui. Um, all right, let's, um, let's go back to TPP. We talked about that with Ambassador Kirk, uh, the Trans-Pacific Partnership. We've heard about uh, you know, Japan, some issues with Japan being a stumbling block. Are we any closer to getting those worked out? Uh, we are moving, uh, Mike, on two tracks. One is those negotiations which are with the current nine members, eight plus U.S., uh, we are continuing to negotiate a very high uh, level uh, 21st century agreement uh, uh, and, uh, and second track is those new countries which have shown interest like Japan, Mexico and Canada and so all the nine countries are meeting bilaterally with, with these three countries and I think it's very simple in terms of our Position number one, decision has to be made by consensus by the nine countries. And secondly, we have done our outreach to our stakeholders in the U.S. as well as Congress, and we have gotten very positive feedbacks in, on all three countries uh, in terms of their joining TPP. But we want to make sure that they uh, meet that high standard which is required of the TPP and also address the issues of concerns uh, which we have with them. What, what does that bring if, if this is successful, TPP? What uh, market potential does that bring to U.S. ag producers? Just to give you an example, currently we have our agricultural trade to those eight uh, countries which are part of the TPP plus U.S. Our exports are about $5 billion to those eight countries. Uh, we expect uh, with the removing the tariffs when tariffs either will go zero upon entry like the Korea agreement we just did last week or with a, some kind of phase-out uh, uh, schedule, uh, we should be able to actually add more to this export potential and you'll say why I say that? Very simply, these are the economies which are the economies which are experiencing double-digit growth in their GDP. These are the economies which uh, contribute to about 50% of uh, global population resides in that Asia-Pacific region and about 40% of trade actually is exports going to that region. We still have markets that have age restrictions on our beef. Are, are we any closer to being able to break through those uh, barriers? Uh, we have made a significant progress, Mike, on this issue. This last year, as you know, for the first time, the exports of U.S. beef went over $5 billion. When BSC outbreak took place in 2003, if you recall, our exports were about $4 billion. And after that, next year in 2004, they went down to less than a billion dollars. So we have regained all that lost ground through negotiations with all these countries uh, in opening market access. Uh, we do not have full market access in some of the countries, as you know. And our mantra is very simple. Number one, uh, you, it has to be based on the science international standard and commercial viability of this. We, as you know, Korea is a good example. We have market access in Korea th 30 months and under. Guess what? We, last year, our exports were more than 20% higher than previous years, $686 million, which is a huge increase over, like, if you look at when they resumed in 2008. Will the new BSC rules proposed by USDA, will that help in those negotiations? It helps in one way and very simply. I think we, what we are 
preaching around the world in terms of science, international standard, it will bring us, our BSE rule, also in very much conformity with the OIE, which is the International Organization of Animal Health, in line with their requirements. So I think it's will, essentially we will be able to go around the world saying, look, we are not only preaching that, we are practicing it. Are there any other... Uh, trade deals that you're working on or markets that you're looking at that could possibly uh, we could see some kind of a trade deal with anytime soon? Uh, number one priority, of course, is to uh, regain uh, the market loss to because of, uh, after BSE to go to full uh, market access in all countries, including Japan, Korea, and also reopening China. Uh, to market, you know, the, our beef market access, which is a high priority for us. Uh, other uh, agreements, as you, TPP is a very high priority for this administration. And I think the other issue is, uh, which President Obama has said, and uh, Ambassador Kirk, enforcing our current trade agreements. As you know, there are a number of countries which practice uh, the rulemaking, which are not based on science, and some of the t trade barriers we face. Good example is India. India has banned our exports of U.S. poultry since 2006. We tried to negotiate bilaterally, diplomatically with them. We were not able to succeed. So about uh, two weeks ago, we filed a complaint for consultation in a panel in the WTO if those consultations fail. We will talk about that with the general counsel for the U.S. Trade Representative's office coming up next. Thank you, sir. You know, it's a great story right now, our ag exports, but obviously they can get even better if a lot of these things work out. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. We thank you for your time. Thank you, Mike, for having me on your show. Thank you. Issy Siddiqui, he is the chief ag negotiator for the U.S. Trade Representative. Stay with us. Much more to come from Washington. This is AgriTalk.